He crowns the humble with salvation. So if we know that God sets himself up against the proud, and he, he you know, values the humble, the ones that show you know, genuine humility. Now, again, humility is not doormat. Humility doesn't mean that we say, oh, we're terrible, we're terrible. It does mean a few things. And I'm going to give you seven kind of antidotes real quick to, to, to battle against the arrogance of the pride that may be creeping itself up in your life. Now, again, these are right out of the chapter, but I'm just going to give you my little flavoring on them. And um, you know, I want to invite you to take some notes uh, real quick. The first one is this. Here's how we can battle against arrogance is that we can assess ourselves Honestly, I mean, really take a personal look at yourself, you know, realize exactly what you're bringing to the table. Okay, realize exactly what your gift mix is, realize exactly how valuable you are. But here's the trick. Don't go any further. Once you realize what you bring to the table, what God has given you to do, stop there. Why? Because if we start talking about things that we aren't, we start, you know, we start figuring, you know, I can bring this and I can bring that to the table and I'm this and I'm the total package and I'm all these things. It says that's arrogance. That's arrogance because that's not from God. That's not something God put in you and gave you. All right, the second thing, don't take success too seriously. You know, I, I, I got advice uh, a little while ago. Somebody told me, they said, you know, Pastor, the way to battle against arrogance is to, you know, you're not as bad as they say you are, to, to believe you're not as bad as they say you are, and you're not as good as they say you are. You're kind of in between. You know, it's like the Olympics when you go and do a skating routine and they throw out the lows and the highs and take that middle. Um, they just want you to get a, you're kind of in the middle there somewhere so you know be careful um, taking yourself too seriously and taking your success too seriously because success is one of those fleeting things you know in fact Max even goes even further to say that when you count our money or we think about our possessions or our success that we should do it while we're sitting in the middle of a cemetery you know and that kind of gives us perspective on what really is successful you know what really is is uh, is, is important. So here's the third one, celebrate others. I think we can really stay humble by celebrating other success. This is when you have the chance to clap and cheer, do you take it? I mean, most of us don't want to be cheerleaders. We want to be in the game. But many times, you guys have probably found this out, is that people need us to cheer them on. And our tendency is to be arrogant and prideful and say, you know what? If it didn't happen to me, I'm not cheering that on. I'm not sticking around to root on other people. And I hope that's not you. You know, I've, I've been guilty of that in the past. I've, you know, if I'm not a star player, I don't want to play the game. I don't even want to be at the field. And when God says, you know what, be in the stands, cheer them on, show humility, show humbleness, show, you know, don't be arrogant and think that you, you have to be the star. Get out there. He's telling me to just cheer them on. So um, it's important to root for, to root for others. That that really, when you're rooting for other people's success, even people that are in your department or in your home, right, root for them. Because I think that really helps us to battle against arrogance. Here's the fourth one: don't demand your own parking place. And what by that he means is don't demand, you know. He says don't don't praise yourself. Let someone else do it. And that's that's in scripture as well. Don't start really, you know, telling other people how great you are. Don't look for your own parking space, your own star on the walk of fame, as it were. Uh, let other people tell you if they have a compliment to make. Don't fish for compliments because all that's doing is feeding that inner pride, man. And that's a again that that bag is heavy, isn't it? It swallows you up when you start believing your press. Okay, number five: don't announce your success before it happens. Wow, it's a huge point from Max. Um, I really believe if you don't start talking about your big game or how great you are before you've done anything, you have less crow to eat or keep you know less feet in your mouth uh, from saying things. So really, just just let things be. Work hard, and when you're successful at it, give the credit to God where it belongs. So be careful, de you know, declaring success before it happens. Number six, and we're almost done. Speak humbly. Speak humbly. Remember, now this was this one knocked me over when I read it in the book, okay? Remember, he wrote, people really aren't impressed with your opinions. Whew. Wow. Now, you know, I, I'll, I have an opinion about everything, don't you? I mean, if you ask me my opinion, I'm going to tell you how I feel. But here's the deal. Just because it's the way we feel about something doesn't mean that people should be impressed by it and that we should be impressed by it. It's just our feelings. It's just our opinion. Okay? Stay humble. Stay focused. And stay, you know, st keep that spirit of humility about you. And that's going to help. And I'm saying that to myself, too, because, uh, you know, I express my opinions a lot. And I have to remember that just because I think it doesn't mean that it's true. Um, and it, also, it doesn't mean that it's uh, that it should be taken as, you know, as, as, as solid gold. And that, uh, you know, all my thoughts even are controlled by God, should be controlled by God and given to me by God. So that really helps battle that arrogance. And last but not least, uh, most important is to live at the foot of the cross. And I love the way he wrapped this chapter up. He said the maker of the stars would rather, you know, die for me than live without me. And I thought, you know, we're all saved by God's mercy and God's grace. And we're all, you know, given that gift of salvation. And all everything we have, everything we are, every, you know, every, just all of us 
is 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 from God. And uh, man, that now you know why God just sets himself up against the proud because it's like we're taking credit for what he's doing. And I want to encourage you today, if you struggle with pride or have struggled with pride, I want you to, again, you prayed for forgiveness, but I want us to focus on those seven things this week to, to really just look back to the cross. Whenever we start feeling arrogant and puffed up, you know, look how great we are, look how fantastic we are, look at all the success we've done, I want you to turn and look at the cross and think to yourself, and I'm going to do the same thing, that we're just, we're just, you know, we're sinners that uh, that God reached down here and, and, and sacrificed his son to, to grab and take up to heaven with him someday to spend eternity with him. Because, you know, the Bible's clear, the wages of sin is death, that we really shouldn't be eligible for heaven because we're prideful, we're arrogant, we're, you know, deceitful, we're, but, 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 but we're also, you know, ben beneficiaries of God's mercy and God's grace. So I'm going to pray for you guys right now about if, if you struggled with arrogance and, and in the past and, man, just leave that bag at the foot of the cross and look up. And remember that God paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. That if there's anything for us to be proud of, is that that we're acts of grace. Is that you know that 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 we're all we're all saved by by our Maker because we're redeemable. That God loves us. That He you know He sacrificed Himself for us. Brag about those things, Paul said. Brag about the cross. Brag about the sacrifice He made on our behalf. So that's really it on arrogance. I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, book study. And uh, let's pray. Father God, thanks for this chance we've had to come together here over the blogs. And um, God, I just pray for those that are struggling with this maybe a little bit. Maybe in the past they've been arrogant or, or struggle with pride. And I would just ask you to show us, search our hearts, God, and help us to, to root out those things that are keeping us um, our own biggest fan. God, I pray for each and every person here as they're focused on humility this week and putting others above themselves, that you would give them the strength to do that. And God, I, here's, I'm gonna, I just want to pray, God, that you would test us in this. I would pray that you'd put an opportunity or an experience in our path that would help us to exercise this muscle. That would really help us to put our money where our mouth is, so to speak, God, and to really live out humility. That when we have every opportunity in the world and every right to be proud and arrogant, that you allow us to show ourselves as humble and, uh, and having humility and being more like Christ. So in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. So thanks for being here today. And I will see you back here Thursday for the study on guilt. And then uh, next week we have a little bit of a change in schedule, but we'll talk about that. Um, thanks for being here on the blogs. Don't forget, the uh, It Matters is still continuing on. So if you have yet to uh, to go to, to flamingorochurch.com slash It Matters, man, I, want, I just want to encourage you with everything I have to get involved because really that money goes right to campus development. It helps us do bigger things with the campuses, not to build a bigger church, but to make a bigger kingdom impact. So there's still time. You can click on that It Matters button. Also, I want to bring your attention to, don't forget about Beach Baptism coming up. On, uh, on April the 12th. I'd love to meet you guys out there at the beach, bright and early, 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time out at Dania Beach. All those details are on the website, flamingoroadchurch.com slash beachbaptism or slash it matters. Thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you who read the blog. Leave me a comment. Let me know you're reading these things and uh, maybe something God's talked to you about in your heart. All right, I'll see you back very, very soon. God bless.